Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Another comment Y4 Atlas video for you. So some news today. Um, well, it looks like the comment may actually be brightening up again. So I'm back here in the Stellarium. You can see that the comment still in the northwestern sky between the constellations of Camelopardalis and Lynx. Um, but today I found out some information that looks like the comet is going through another outburst. So uh, over the past few weeks, it's been kind of a roller coaster ride with this comet. Um, I mean, first it was brightening, and then it started going down in brightness. Couldn't figure out why, and then it looked like the comet was fragmenting, and then boom, we found out that indeed the comet has indeed broken apart. And you can see here, back on the virtual telescope page, um, the image of the comet, and indeed you can see that the comet has fragmented. And there's multiple pieces of the nucleus um, all traveling together. And when this occurred, the brightness curve went down. It dipped down to the upper eight to ninth magnitude. Uh, so it got a lot dimmer than it was, unfortunately. But uh, just a few hours ago, on the Comet Atlas Facebook page, I got a, uh, or a solid graph right here. And this graph is basically just a, uh, a light curve graph. I can make this a little bit bigger light curve graphs that shows the uh, well, basically the brightness of the comet over time as it's changed and as you can see here around April 17th just a few days ago you can see that it started going on an upward swing and indeed it's showing now that the comet is around 7.6 magnitude uh, saw this and was like wow I can't believe that she is actually brightening up again now this is from the Cobb's comet up observation database so I went over to the Cobb's website just to confirm this information and indeed Y4 Atlas boom 7.5 magnitude trend is brightening so what is going on with this thing well basically what's probably happening is a piece of the comet's nucleus or a couple of fragments are undergoing an outburst right now as the comet gets closer and closer to the Sun it starts to heat up more and more which releases more gas and that in turn causes the, the comet to brighten up. So this, I wouldn't say this is unexpected behavior. Um, actually, it'll probably continue to do this as it continues its journey toward the sun. I don't think this is an indication that we're going to see a grand show like we all thought we were going to see in the month of May. Uh, so be very cautious uh, about getting your hopes up, you know, keep your expectations low. It's kind of cool that it is brightening up again, but we don't know what's going to happen could very well drop off in brightness yet again um, but it's interesting nonetheless definitely warrants more observation so if you have binoculars or a telescope go out and try to find it again you know see if it's uh, able to be seen visually maybe compare it to what you've seen uh, previously in the last couple of weeks and if you're an imager I'll definitely go out and take a look and see if you can get some interesting uh, photographs as well because I'd like to see if uh, this thing actually is indeed brightening other than that, all we can do is kind of wait and see what's going to happen next. A lot of astronomers liken comets to cats. They kind of do whatever the hell they want to do. So it's going to be a wild ride. So we'll just have to wait and see what Comet Atlas continues to do. In the meantime, Comet Swan is also in the sky. That's more of a southern hemisphere comet as of right now. Um, later on in May, it will peak over the horizon for northern hemisphere observers, but It'll be very low in the sky, and fortunately, it looks like it won't be as well be as good of a show for us folks up in the northern hemisphere. But comments are comments. Hey, I'm just glad we have some in the sky to look at right now. We'll keep an eye on Atlas. We'll see what it does next. And also, if you're able to see Swan, uh, keep your eye on Swan as well. Also, this week is the Laird meteor shower. Uh, so this week, I believe, on Tuesday. The 21st into the night of Wednesday, the 22nd, or the morning, I should say, uh, the peak of the Laird meteor shower will be happening. I believe the hourly rates for this shower is around 10 to 20 meters per, per hour, but so that's not really a, uh, a lot of meteors, but there won't be any moon to worry about this week, so it should be a fairly good show if you go out and take a look. Uh, go out and take a look after midnight. It's usually the best time to look. Um, when it's the most dark in the sky and the radiant for the meteor showers nearly overhead. 
that's pretty much it for this video. I've got more videos coming, especially videos for equipment reviews. I also got a new piece of equipment um, last week that I'm super excited about. Um, something I've been wanting for a long time, and I think it's really going to change the game for me as far as astrophotography goes. So stay tuned for that. But as always, uh, be careful out there, take care of each other, and I will see you in the next one.